All right, welcome back to Ears to Hear number six. It's October 24th. We're here early in the morning, and I'm here with, with my host, my co-host, Alan. How are you doing today, Alan? I'm doing wonderful, sir. Awesome. Reporting for duty. Reporting for duty. I'm ready. I'm, I'm good to go. I can't think of a better <laughs> way to start our Saturday morning. And what is our topic today, good sir? Today is a good one. It's one that I've been looking forward to through the whole week. And uh, one that you, I think you set up really well, unknowingly, at the end of last week with your closing argument. Okay. And here, I, I know this is kind of a long... <laughs> no, you, you do it. Do it. But this is what you said last <laughs> hey, you're, week. you're telling me how smart I am. I'm it's not true. You. <laughs> how in tune you are. <laughs> but you said last week, I guarantee with what's coming, we want to have each other's backs. And that was a perfect setup for today because we're talking about being prepared or mm -hmm. preparedness. Yeah. So you 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 were in tune, sir. You were you were you were ready. <laughs> you know, broken clocks right every now and then, right? <laughs> At least twice a day. <laughs> At least twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll ask you the question. What what did you mean by that? What was your thought hmm. behind that statement? Uh I think that I, I recognize that there's there's stuff in the future that's going to be difficult to deal with stuff that uh, that the way that we currently are might be difficult to go through unless we are maybe prepared <laughs> <laughs> maybe if if we're not in the correct state of mind and you know temporally as well as spiritually if we're not in the correct place it's gonna be a lot more difficult for us to go through those things uh, than if we, you know, prepare for that. How would you say that the uh, the church body as a whole is doing with that? Hmm, that's that's interesting. It's a loaded question. But... Yes, it's. <laughs> I think it really depends on where you're looking. Like I, yeah. I see some people uh, who I just aspired to be like, right? Right. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking even particularly on my mission, this was what, 12 something years ago. Uh, I remember going over to Brother Mann's house up in Canada and went down into their basement and man, the preparation that I saw there was awe-inspiring. Like just the, the way they had organized their cans and their shelves and how they used it to rotate food and whatnot. Like that was, I thought that was super impressive. Yeah. And at the same time, I've also, I've seen people maybe even wonder if, if the time for having food storage, the time for being prepared in that way is past. Maybe, you know, maybe up to this last conference. <laughs> Because it felt like like it hasn't been discussed in a while. Yeah, but I've. Oh, well, it hasn't. Yeah. So I, the church body as a whole, I'd say it's if I'm if I'm gonna you know sneak peek into a, a possible parable that mm. might come up, <laughs> um, I'm gonna say we're maybe fifty fifty. Yeah, that's probably accurate. <laughs> yeah. That's probably a safe a, a safe guesstimate considering that was a. a parable that Jesus put forth. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and I, I think we're definitely starting to see that prophecy that parable come into reality yes, yes. i think that's something we're very and, and we're referring to the the 10 virgins yes <laughs> by the way just in case yeah. someone's <laughs> lost listening <laughs> but i think we're getting close to seeing the the reality of that come to pass in our lives yeah absolutely and, and it's it's crazy because the more that i have spoken to people about being prepared and preparedness because it's uh, years ago, probably, probably about ten years ago, I'd say, mm -hmm. there was there was a disturbance in the force. You know, yes. <laughs> there was a disturbance in the force, and me and a lot of uh, other people that I connected with were all feeling it at the exact same time, and it was almost like everybody was feeling that disturbance, and it was mm -hmm. like something's coming. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what you were saying at the end of our last podcast was you know, preparing for what's coming. So with what's coming. Yeah. And there's a lot of people because I, I thought it was just me at first, but as time has gone on, there was a lot of people that felt something that felt something was coming. Right. Yeah. Now, whatever that is, is speculation, right? We don't exactly know what's coming. We, we can look at the scriptures. We can look at the, what the prophets are saying. And especially after last conference, I would say that 
that that was a correct, you know, mm-hmm. discerning of, of, of a disturbance in the force, so that something is coming. Yeah. But let, let me read a quote really quick here. This was from um, February 5th, 2016. This was a CES, uh, the Lord's Education System for the Church, and this was by Elder Kim B. Clark. And he said, whatever level of spirituality we now enjoy in our lives, whatever degree of faith in Jesus Christ we have, whatever strength of commitment or consecration we have, whatever degree of obedience or hope or charity is ours, whatever level of professional skill or ability we may, excuse me, we may have obtained, it will not be sufficient for the work that lies ahead. Brothers and sisters, you and I need to be much better than we are now in every aspect of our lives. The scriptures teach us that the world is now and will be in commotion, and we can see it all around us. Wickedness and darkness will increase. It seems hard to imagine, but it will. Yet in that darkening world, there will be an increased light, divine light. The Lord Jesus Christ has a great work for us to do with the rising generation. It's a greater work than we've ever done before. The Lord is working in power to strengthen teaching and learning in His true and living church. He's hastening His work. That was pretty powerful. Yeah. Especially the first part where He basically said, and I've heard this before from multiple general authorities, and the prophets even said it, where they says, look, where we are right now, that's not good enough. (laughs) Yeah. You know? And that's a sobering thought. And that, that right there is a gut check. Yeah. Because this was given in 2016, right? It's not that long ago. That, not that long ago. And this was before things really ramped up, right? Yeah. Because in, the the, in the last year, things really got crazy. 2020's been... It's been, <laughs> it's been a heck of a year. It feels like four years <laughs> in one. It, it really with does. With everything that's been going on. Things just all of a sudden took off at, at light speed. I, you know, I find that really impactful... Because, you know, I often, I, I find that I'm making the relation to us as a people a lot like the Hebrews who were enslaved to the Egyptians before Moses comes and sets them free, right? Right. And because I see a lot of, I guess, some, some similarities. It seems like we are, we're kind of caught in Egypt or Babylon right now. And, yeah. and yeah. I mean, we're looking forward to the day that we are kind of freed from that influence, you know, I, I, I remember reading or hearing somewhere that, you know, that the saints will be praying for the second coming to come, yes. you know, by the time the time is yes. there. And that's where, and I've said multiple times that I'm, I'm more, I'm more ready and excited for what's happening, even though I know there's some crap to go through. Right. But, you know, to, to even hand that out, I don't think the, the Hebrews, you know, knew what they were in for, you know, when they had to leave, uh, Egypt, you yeah, know, yeah. they 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 were expecting to go to a land flowing with milk and honey, right? They thought it was going to be easy going, yeah. And it was it was a tough go of it, right? Especially because the preparation, the spiritual preparation, really wasn't quite there. I think they they probably prepared as much as they could physically within you know the time they had to clear right. out, right? But they weren't really prepared for what was ahead of them, and it was a tough go of it. And I wonder, you know, we might be in the same boat where we are all excited for the next phase for the deliverer to come but are we really prepared for the next stage that's a that's a you know like you said a gut check that's a tough question to to answer yeah it's it's a tough thing to hear because you're you know it seems like especially nowadays it's like man i'm just trying to keep my head above water you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean like i i feel like i definitely suck at at least a couple things right like mm-hmm. something i know i'm supposed to be doing is is uh some family history stuff yep i haven't touched family history luckily my dad is all over it and i'm super hoping that he goes back to adam (laughs) before he dies because that's just something like it's it's hard to find time to to do that stuff you know what i mean there's a lot of pulls on our time yep and a lot of things that we need to be prepared for and it doesn't always sound the the most appealing no thing to do <laughs> in the moment, right? <laughs> Just like you know, when when you have to sit down and do your homework, when you'd rather be watching your favorite show or exactly. something. Exactly, it's kind of that same thing. Like, well, okay, family history, I guess, you know. And then there's also that, you know, how do you get it done? But I think, I mean, there's a very real thing for a lot of us. I think, I imagine we all have 
certain aspects of the gospel that we're just, you know, we don't have the best. We're not there yet. Yeah, we're not there yet. Yeah. And I remember uh, going back to my mission, I remember fasting has always been something like that for me. Like I have had just a difficult time with it. Uh, you know, I get, you know, when I go without food, I get really shaky and everything. And I know that part of that is the point, right? To divorce yourself from the physical dependence on the world. Yeah. But it's always been tough for me. And, and I've had a hard time making that a spiritual experience. It wasn't until I was on my mission with my trainee, actually, the first time I, I trained somebody on my mission. And you know, I swear that the guy trained me more than I trained him. <laughs> but he's like, he's like, really? He's like, I love fasting. He's like, we're gonna have a good experience. He was yeah. probably a skinny you know, 110 pound dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was, he was a little bit Yeah. <laughs> it's quite accurate. A man without any meat on his bones. <laughs> yeah. But we, I mean, he did, we went through a process and we, you know, it was, you know, at the end of that, I think I, I've looked at the dates and I think it was pretty close to near the end of our fasting that we found, uh, one of, one of my favorite investigators, you know, that I found on my mission where I actually got to take someone for the whole process from beginning to end of, of finding someone on the street to getting them baptized. And that was something I had really been craving because I hadn't experienced it. And it was because of that fasting experience. So I think, I think it's a good, this is a good opportunity right now while we're in the comfort of our homes yeah. where there's a lot of food on the shelf. There's, yes, there's some, uh, there's some commotion in the world, but largely in our own homes, I think there's a lot of peace because of what, how we've been living so far. This is a good opportunity for us to look at some of those things that we're lacking and take the opportunity to try to, to reinforce that before the war comes. And this, you know, I actually have a, 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 a my little preparation I've done for the preparation uh, <laughs> podcast, but I was thinking of Captain Moroni, right? And he... Before the big war hits, he spends a lot of time preparing. That's where I'm at right now, the Book yeah. of Mormon. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's wonderful. You look at what he does. He finds the weak places in in their society, the weak places in their, you know, the fence line of cities, and he makes those places places of strength. And it's a lot of work. Yeah. You, know, you look at what he does. He, you know, he digs the ditch. He puts the towers up, the walls, the picket fences. He, you know, throws the dirt up on the other end. You know, he does a lot to. Do you think there reinforce. was any grumbling? Oh, guaranteed, <laughs> guaranteed. I imagine there's some people like, why are we, why are we trying to defend why this city? Are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> this is peacetime, bro. Like. <laughs> What's going on? We don't need to do this. I just worked the farm, and now I gotta build a, a dirt yeah. wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I've got stuff to do. Yeah, and and then you look when the war hits, they go to one city, and they they recognize the preparation there. Yeah, they're like, well, let's go back to the one that we always hit. Mm -hmm. You know, let's yeah. go back to that weak place, and they go there, and they get demolished. Not only because they weren't expecting it, but it's because they're like, oh, that's going to be super easy. We'll swear an oath. We're just going yeah. to take this city down. And so they just, they get destroyed because they come up against the preparation yep. that Captain Moroni had been putting in place. And like President Nelson said in the recent conference, he never stopped preparing. And that's, I think that's a tough and interesting concept to ingrain in ourselves, to never stop preparing for what's ahead of us. Yeah, At absolutely. least at this stage in life. That's, that's a... Fantastic point because you can see. So Mormon had a whole cave full of scriptures he could have put in, right? Mm -hmm. And he even says throughout the whole thing that they always say, "Look, we we can't even put a hundredth part of what we're talking about here of, of the stuff that we have." Yeah. But for whatever reason, Mormon was inspired to put in what he put in, and the fact that he put in all those all those war chapters and especially that preparation stuff. Mm -hmm. That was not by accident, that's for sure. No. And that was meant for us to look at and say, okay, there's something here. You know, yeah. just like we talked about that scripture of of um Lahontai and stuff last time coming down from the yeah. from the mountain like that. That was a, a war thing, but that was put there for a reason. Yeah. It's the same thing here. It's like we, we have to be prepared. You can't just coast right the people in that city couldn't just coast through the war <laughs> yep. or even through peacetime for that matter they had to they had to do something they had to do something yeah. right 
And I think that's the hardest thing, especially as us as members of the church, because we are living in Babylon and there's a lot going on. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things that will keep us from building up our wall. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's the, that that's going to be the hardest thing for anybody in the, in the last days is as more and more Babylon creeps into our lives, I think there's almost a normalcy bias that happens because hmm. the more I've talked to people about preparedness and how the, you know, that the church leaders have asked us to be prepared, especially before last conference, last conference gave Alan a little bit of clout. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, a little bit more room I've to been hit. saying it for a long time, you know, <laughs> and it's not like I was saying anything new. I was just repeating what, what we've been told growing up. That's how it was, right? You yeah. go in there. Everybody always had food storage. When I was young, everybody had food storage, mm -hmm. at least where I grew up. But now, especially I think among our generation and younger, you know, people in their, in their, you know, thirties and forties and younger, that there's not as much of a focus or emphasis on that as there was in the past. And there's almost a, a normalcy bias against having food storage where they say, yeah, but you know, they haven't talked about that in a long time, <laughs> right? That, yeah. Obviously before last conference, or they say, you know, yeah, but the church stores up food. They've got a bunch of food up there at Welfare Square, you know, <laughs> and the, it almost makes them, they're almost trying to to reason their way out of being prepared and yeah. to make themselves feel better, you know? <laughs> because it's it's work. It's work. You know, and I'll bet, you know, rarely do I hear a talk about preparation and I have like the warm fuzzies, okay, you're fine. You know, I, I often have the reaction like, okay, what am I missing? <laughs> You know, and that's never a fun conversation to have. How? Do, what do we need to sacrifice now? Right. A little bit more to make this better. What? What can we change? You know, there's certain times you know, you're listening to conference, or whatever, and there's you get the the warm fuzzies, you get the confirmation, things are going good. I'm doing good in this, or, right? Or you get edified by what's what you're hearing, but you also you have to balance that out with the with the criticism, you know. And I think a lot of us maybe have, have come to the point where we kind of turn our ears off when we hear a talk, you know, like I'm going to speak about preparation, you know, and how many people like, Oh, here we go. Yep. You know, even, even this podcast, I wonder how many people are like, Oh, it's that podcast. <laughs> it's it's going to be that lesson today. Yeah. You know, and, and the ears have kind of come off a little bit, but I do think with recent events, I think people have come to, to see how quickly our, our world can shift. I mean, toilet paper <laughs> exactly <laughs> i remember like i remember going to the store that night that everything went crazy and i really just needed a few things and i'll admit i think part of it is i wanted to see right <laughs> you know right but this the shelves were cleared yeah you know and and it was weeks before like you know we were we starting to think okay well maybe we need to get like some yeast and more flour you know those things were hard to find yeah because especially here people are like oh those are the those are the essentials you know and they went fast and you could see how trying to trying to last second this isn't going to work out very well right now if you go you can find those things yeah they're on the shelves right now because people have come back to a, a sense of normalcy with everything right right the right. panic has subsided but what happens when we reach a state of panic that doesn't die down yeah you know and what happens if we get major things that affect the supply lines that run like we're we're a very fragile system despite the fact that we're running the way we are just in time delivery <laughs> yep that's what it is yep and, and you're not gonna be able to rely on doordash yeah you know, exactly. until until the second coming you know exactly and it's it's so this is not judgmental what i'm saying here this is no. an observation right this is an observation i mean it's as much for us right exactly exactly so when that all went down it's funny that the first thing that everyone freaked out about was toilet paper that should not have been the first thing that <laughs> we were think freaking. So, right? If you need to take a shower after you go to the bathroom that's fine, you know what I mean? <laughs> yep. I would rather have some to get food that. to eat. I would rather have a cause to have to use the toilet paper <laughs> first, right? <Yes. laughs> And the, and like I say, this is not judgmental. This is an observation, but how many LDS people freaked out and went and got food? 
because those yeah. those those words of wisdom that we've been hearing for years were echoing in their minds at a time when they thought it was too late. Yeah. You know what I mean? The panic by Yeah, the panic. Like, oh no, the time is coming. I wasn't prepared. Like, okay, I've been hearing this for decades, for for over probably 70 years now. Mm -hmm. 70, 80 years. I mean, Brigham Young talked about it. Mm -hmm. like, so, so we've been hearing this since really the inception of our church to be prepared. And there's a lot of people who just shirk that yeah. period. You know, they, they just shirk it because, eh, whatever. I don't, uh, you mm -hmm. know, they don't have a good excuse, really. Yeah. But then when all that stuff happened, you know, it, I, I felt, not that I'm putting myself on a pedestal here, but I, I've been I've been doing a little bit, you know, over the course of 10 years, I've been putting it away. I've been putting it away. And that's how you're supposed to do it, little by little. You're not supposed to go out and freak out and panic by yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if, if you're in a situation where you can, good on you. Yeah, if but... you got, if you got the capital to do that, then <laughs> yep. I see nothing wrong with that. If you can build your fallout <laughs> shelter and, and fill yeah. it full of stuff, good for you. If you can do that in the 11th hour, that's fine. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but I bet you for most of us, that's not the reality. Well, and I, and, and I can testify to you guys that there is a feeling of peace that came during that time when I said, I know that my family will not be going hungry for a long time. You know, I've, I, I've definitely got the, the year or two supply for sure. And there, there is a peace that comes <laughs> even with the toilet paper, you know, <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know what, we're good. Like we, we looked back and we, we actually had a discussion as a family about it where my kids were like, dad, we have food. We're fine. <laughs> you know, like it was a, it, it clicked for them. And, they, and I saw it click in their eyes and we were all just like, yeah, we're good. We don't need to go, you know, run to Costco and battle the crowd. And, you yeah. know what I mean? And at that time risk a, a serious, you know, a serious illness that we knew nothing about and stuff. Like we, we didn't know what was going on, but, but that there was peace that came mm -hmm. with being prepared. Yeah. And I say as someone who, so we've been where we've, where we're living, we've been there for a long time. And for the longest time, I always, you know, made the, the excuse where I was like, well, we're in a, we're in a small place. There's not really a whole lot I can do to prepare, you know, and we, you know, we tried, you know, but we weren't putting in our best efforts. And, and then as we've over the last, I want to say like six, seven years, as we've kind of opened our minds to what we could possibly be having to deal with. And I think that's 100% the Lord kind of pushing us a direction. He's been prodding us. Um, we've made efforts, you know, and, and, you know, and not every effort's been received well. Sometimes I'm like, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> Talking to my wife, like, yeah. why do we need to do this? This is, this is a little excessive, you know, and, and I've balked at it sometimes, you know, cause it, it's not exactly convenient all yeah. the time to prepare yeah. it was kind of getting in the way of just living normal life sometimes you know and and but i've come around to that you know and and she's you know quick to tell me i told you so all right <laughs> but she's right and so she wanted to mention three times in conference <laughs> yeah yeah but I, it, it's not that bad if you just decide that you're going to do a little bit here and there. That's, that's what I've decided. That's how you're that's supposed what, to do it. That's what they've been saying for years, right? And it's like, huh, funny, if you just try to test it out, it works, you know? And so, you know, when you go to the market, maybe you pick up an extra couple packs of spaghetti. You know, maybe you pick up another bag of flour. A couple, a couple extra cans of Spam. You know? Yeah. <laughs> It'll yeah, last when, forever. When you get a pallet of green beans, get a second pallet. Yeah, you exactly. Know? And, and that stuff will add up over time, you know? And, and trust in the Lord to help inspire you to what to do. You know, not everyone is going to have the same needs as everyone else, you know? And, and if I, I remember listening to a podcast uh, recently, and the guy talked about how someone had written into him and told him like he found this just immense peace from living being in the present especially with everything that's going on it's so easy to get worried about where we've been and where we're going he's like he was in the moment he was chopping firewood at his place and he felt inspired to do double what he normally would you yeah. know to, to go the extra mile and he said instead of like balking at it or wondering if that was him or wondering if that was necessary he said he just did it yeah and he said there was immense peace to that. He still doesn't understand why, what that's going to do. But if we can do that just like in the moment, pay attention to the promptings in the moment. And if you can do that over several hundred, you know, moments, 
you can find yourself in a situation where you're much more prepared for any disaster that may come. And like you said, have the peace that comes with that. That's really, I think, almost at the heart of all of this. One is to, to have peace now, and the other is to have peace later Right. when things hit the fan, you know? And, you know, and I, I, where we're at, I still don't know if we're fully prepared for what's coming, but I just know that I'm going to keep going. Yeah. And then at a certain point, just like how the gospel works, you have to trust in the Lord to make up the difference. And he, that is like the, if there is a point to this life, it is doing what we can and then recognizing that it's never enough and then allowing space for, to let the Lord prevail in our lives, as you know, said in conference. Yeah, absolutely. And the, there's two stories, two Bible stories that come to mind when, mm -hmm. when you mention that. And one of them is obviously the, the fish and the loaves, right? Okay. They didn't have enough fish and loaves to feed that crowd. That was mm -hmm. a lot of people. They had like, well, I can't remember what it was. It was like five fish and seven loaves or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something. So they had what they had. They said, look, this is what we got. You know, and Jesus said, okay, hand it over. <laughs> And then he yep. fed a few thousand people with it somehow. We'll make do. Yeah, yeah. He somehow 3D printed some fish, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> However he did it, he did it. And and you, you go back to the Old Testament when Elijah came, right? And he, he showed up at the widow's door. Her and her son had their last bit, bit of meal mm -hmm. that they were going to make for themselves. They were going to eat it and then die, right? Yep. It's kind of sad. <laughs> But Very real. <laughs> he shows up and he, and, you know, he's a prophet of, of God and he says, hey, give me that, that little piece of cake that you're making, mm -hmm. that you were going to make for you and your son and then die. Give it to me and uh, I'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. Well, the Lord will take care of you. Mm -hmm. And so she had faith. She did it. And then all of a sudden, boom, throughout the whole rest of the famine, that, that amount of meal that she had and that amount of oil that they had never failed to mm -hmm. the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I think sometimes even people, because that that's an exact illustration of what you just made the point of. It's like get what you can, and then turn to the Lord. Say, hey, I've done everything I can. If you can honestly say you've done everything you can, that is when the worry should be lifted from your shoulders. Because somehow, some way, God is going to use that to take care of you. Yeah. Whatever's going to happen is it you know is supposed to happen at that point. Yeah. But I mean, I, it's a fine balance, yeah. right? Because you can easily shift that one way or the other and get yourself out of harmony with Heavenly Father. Like, you know, I think of when they, they needed the tribute money, right? Peter, you know, they, the, the temple patrons or whoever, I can't remember exactly, but they come to Christ and to Peter and say, hey, you need to pay your tribute money to the temple. You know, your, your taxes, basically, your spiritual taxes, yeah. which is what they did at that time. That was the custom. The temple coin, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, Peter's a little, well, he, he's worried about it for a couple of reasons. You know, just the, the fact that they don't have a lot. But, you know, Christ tells him to go fish, you know, and, and it'll be provided. And he mm -hmm. does, and he goes fish, and he fishes out of, and there's there's coin inside the fish, enough for the tribute. You know, and that that miracle happened to Joseph Smith. And the, the people, as they were moving to Kirtland, they had the same similar experience where they didn't have money for a need that they had. Yeah. They went fishing and they found it inside a fish, you know. And I didn't know that. I never heard that story. Yeah. Wow. Well, i got to look that up. <laughs> and uh, so that can happen. But Peter would be wrong to expect that in the future, right, for right. every need that they had. Like, right. oh, okay, well, it's okay, Lord, we'll just go fish again. You know, you, you'll just, you'll miraculously provide We'll start it. relying on that. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, we also have to be, have space for that to happen. So there's there's equal parts of of doing what we can, as much as we can, and then, and then letting the Lord take over. Yeah. Well, there's even an old saying that goes along with that, and it says, like, like uh, prepare and act like it all depends on you, but recognize that it really all depends on the Lord, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after you've done all you can do, that's when the Lord steps in type thing. Yeah. I mean, you don't even know. Maybe the Lord has prepared you to go overboard. You don't even recognize it. You're going crazy. And maybe you will be somebody that will take care of somebody else who, for whatever reason, wasn't able to store up as much. You know, so may, you may, you know, you may be in a spot that you're more than okay for yourself, but you still feel the need to keep going. Yeah. Pay attention to that because the Lord, he's going, he has a genius plan for all of us. He knows what's going to happen. 
None of this is going to take him by surprise, and he's using the people who are ready and willing and able to listen to him to help you know, reinforce everybody. That, you know, as, as I studied for this topic, that was the, that's what I took out of it. Honestly, it's funny that you bring that up because that is what I got out of it was as I was going through all that, like most of the quotes that the prophets are talking about, they don't just say, prepare for yourself type thing. Mm -hmm. And especially going back to the 1800s with Brigham and, and all of those early brethren, Whenever they would talk about food stores, they basically were planning on taking care of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And they, they would say, you know, look, us as a people, we need to, as a people, be prepared. Because when the Gentiles run out of bread and the, and the you know, the, I don't know how to say it, I guess the less evil Gentiles, the ones who, have, <laughs> who, who are capable of repentance at that point, who've been humbled, they'll come to, to us for bread. Yeah. You know, and... and they're planning on feeding them, you know, and I, I, I tried to find the, uh, I tried to find the uh, prophecy that talks about that, but there is a prophecy that talks about us as a people, as a people, being being uh, burdened with the people who will flee to the Rocky Mountains yeah. for a refuge and for bread, and that we'll be in danger of famine, but that we'll have enough food, basically. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's crazy, you know what I mean? Because I think about myself, and I've had this attitude before where I've, I've had to evolve a little bit, <laughs> but as I prepare, I'm like, you know what, you guys are getting the same instruction that I'm getting, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm okay sharing with, with family and friends like that and stuff like that, but when there's people that I've been telling, hey, get freaking prepared, man, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, people that just... They, they, they take the advice and they just basically poo-poo it. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? They toss it away. You're casting your pearls before swine type situation. Those are the people that that is an Abrahamic test for a lot of people. Yeah. People who have been preparing, who have been telling those people to prepare. And then those people come with their families after they have been casting your pearls, but you know, but before they're just tossing it away. And then you having to share with those people. But that's what's going to be expected. Yeah, of us. That's I, what we have to be prepared to do. That's going to be a real test. That's going to be a huge test. When when the prodigal son returns home, are you going to be the father that welcomes them and you know falls upon their neck? Or are you going to be the brother who's a little pissed, <laughs> a little angry yeah. at the situation? And that the brother was welcomed back so right easily, now, and I'm you've more, been so stalwart. I'm more in the brother's camp. Yep. <laughs> and it's very easy, right? It's very easy to find yourself there. And all the people that tell me that I'm wrong about that, you know, they're, like, well, you need to, they're the ones who aren't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it feels, right? I'm like, yeah, of course you're saying that. <laughs> you know, and, and I, me and my wife and uh, her brother and her sister, we've... For a long time now, we get together pretty regularly and we like to, you know, we're we're seeking out more truth and light. You know, we, we go yeah. through a lot of different sources. And, and if you ask me, the only way you're ever going to fully understand the mysteries of God is by exposing yourself to different areas of possible truth, right? And so one of the things that we really got into and still enjoy are like the near-death experiences that people have. Yeah, I, they, I like those as well. Yeah. Yeah. And they have, you know, visions of the future. And I, obviously you have to take everything with a grain of salt because right. what people see, it's definitely for them. But I imagine that we can all benefit from it yeah. if we can take the righteous There's definitely principles. Some, some faith promotion yeah. there. I mean, if, we want, if you want to go word for word and like, this is <clears> prophecy, <throat> you might get yourself sticky. But yeah, if you can yeah. look at the righteous principles that are displayed, you can learn something. And in more than a few stories, uh, they mention how the saints, you know, at some point they come together, uh, they bring what they have together, which is really, at some point, I'm not sure when, but I guarantee that's going to happen because that is the law of consecration at some point. Yeah. But they found that the people who are willing to share whatever they had, the miracle of the loaves and the fishes was realized for them. Right. Their yeah. food storage lasted way longer than it was supposed to. And for some, somehow they just kept going with what they had. On the on, conversely, the people who got self righteous and angry and kept to themselves and said, "No, I'm going to section off my stuff. This yep. is my stuff. Keep it away." They said, oftentimes their stuff would run out quicker or go bad because they were just the the their stockpiles were 
almost representing their emotions and their feelings right. at the time. Right. And so there is there is a wonderful balance here of all of us. If all of us can prepare and over prepare, which yeah. is I imagine what the Lord will prompt us to do. That he'll he'll if, as long as you're willing to keep going, he's going to allow you to get further ahead than you what you actually need, so that we can all take care of each other more comfortably. But if you're sitting back on your haunches, yeah, maybe maybe someone will come in and save you. But then at that point, you're relying wholly on that, right? Yeah, exactly. And you'll you'll have your own trials to deal with. I would I would much rather be the person that someone comes to for food storage than have to swallow my pride <laughs> yeah. and, and go ask for food because my kids are starving yeah you know and and we're you know we're worried that we can make it and the the reality of how this could come out in our lives we don't really know you know maybe a, you know there's a big disaster that hits maybe you know the whole system for food changes to a way that we can't partake in right as christians right there's a lot of different ways for this to go about Ooh, that and, was a that was a nice little foreshadowing there. <laughs> yes. If you guys didn't catch that, look into that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. If you if you want to look into the mark of the beast, you mm -hmm. know, and, and the stuff surrounding that, there there is a way to interpret that in in the fact that maybe food is still all the way, you know, the stores are still open. It's abundant. But maybe because we refuse to partake in a certain ideology or a certain way of living because of what we believe, we're not able to take advantage of that. And how how frustrating is that going to be if you don't have food on your shelves, but the stores are open, but you can't go get them unless you succumb to certain things that you don't want to? Well, you know? and side note, back east, they're talking about that with a vaccine. Mm -hmm. They're saying, you know, and I'm not saying that's the mark of the beast, but I'm saying, look how easily it could happen. Yeah. Because for a long time, we looked at that and thought, okay, that's weird. How the heck would that happen? It could happen like that with, mm -hmm. with at the snap of a thumb, man. Because if if they say, "Okay, we've we, we've we've deemed you a danger to society, and until you get this, you're not going to buy any food. You're not going to be able to work or anything." Yeah, try like to that. force your hand. I'm not saying that's the mark of the beast, but I'm saying that's a nice representation of the mark of the beast. Yeah, it could happen like that. I mean, even even if it's just something that makes you feel uncomfortable. Yes. If if you don't have any sort of preparation in place you don't you're without choices right at that point and i right. think at the heart of preparation is the ability to preserve your ability to make a choice later on down the road if yes. you have provisions you have power further down the road to make decisions but if you don't you might be funneled more than you want to be and i think you know it for me it was perfect symmetry that the prophets and the Lord want us to be in a, a place that later on we can still make decisions over how we want to live versus having them made for us because we don't have anything. Yeah. We don't have any power of our, over our own selves because we don't have preparation. Beggars can't be choosers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, and it's interesting that you say that too, because there's, so I'm a, I'm, I'm a prepper and I'm part of a, a prepper groups as well. Right. <laughs> yep. So that, that's why this thing is, is near and dear to my heart. But there's the attitude that I spoke of, of you're not getting crap because you didn't prepare and you have, you have just as much money, you have more money than I do, yeah. and you know, and you're not listening. That is a prepper mentality for sure, <laughs> for sure. And, but, but something that they say is that, you know, growing your own food, being able to get a hold of your own food is like being able to print your own money. Yeah. And I thought, holy cow, I've never thought of that. That was profound, you know. Money is worthless, really. It really is. It is, yeah. It, especially nowadays, like it, you know, with all the printing we're doing <laughs> of yeah. money and stuff like that. The artificial know, yeah. pumping up of, of the economy. Exactly. Yeah. But if you can if you can make your own food, if you can if you can grow your own food and stuff like that, then you you can print your own money basically. Yeah. I mean, you think of, I mean, money is really just a paper representation of gold stores. Yeah. And gold stores in of themselves really only represent the ability to get food. Yeah, <laughs> if you exactly. look at it, when it really comes down to yep. it, food and, and you know, I guess you, you put it that with like clothing, you know, yes. the, the daily necessities, that is the valuable thing. Everything else is kind of just barter for that, and it's interesting how we've you know shifted farther and farther away from that as much as possible, 
to make that less of the reality, but that's very much the case. If, if we are able to take care of ourselves on our own, right? Like there's times where I'm like, man, I wish I just would have grown up as a farmer, Yeah, you know, <laughs> my own yeah. plot of land where, you know, I could, I could, you know, have just a huge fields of, of my own food. I would feel <laughs> almost more comfortable now than I would having a, you know, a, a entrepreneurial you know, yes. position in the city. Yes, absolutely. I would feel much more comfortable on a farm knowing that even if everything goes to crap, I know how to work the land. Yep. And I imagine most of us, me included, I have no idea how to do that. You know, I've, <laughs> I've worked on gardens, you know, and I try, but man, I have no idea how to mass produce food. So funny story. I, I have taken that to heart and I've, I've turned, I took and I pulled up a bunch of my lawn and I put in a garden, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we were very unsuccessful. <laughs> That's, we tried this last year too. It did. I don't think we got anything. <laughs> I lost all my beans. <laughs> the only thing I was able to grow were things that were like grow like weeds. You know what I mean? Like, yep. I got some Jerusalem artichokes or some sun chokes, <laughs> and those grew. <laughs> but everything else died. <laughs> yep, it was bad, and that that was very eye opening. It's like, okay, just because you have a seed vault in in your freezer <laughs> doesn't mean you're going to have food you have to know how to work that yeah, there's some there's some know-how there there's some preparation that goes into <laughs> that. <laughs> and that and i think that makes a good point that preparation I and mean, we've hit the the food stuff yep. really hard and we've kind of talked about the spiritual stuff but i mean preparation goes into so many different aspects of our of our, who we are like if it's knowledge that you're needing if it's if it's coming closer to the lord that you're needing if anything i would say even and this is not rationalization it's really easy to say this and then ignore the physical aspect right but i think the spiritual aspect may be even more important than the physical aspect in in the fact that the lord can work wonders with the people that have faith and truly believe in his ability to save I think that can that can make up that difference that we're talking about. It's a lot easier for the Lord to work his miracles when the people believe and and understand who he is and know how to ask and know how to receive personal revelation. No, it's it's very true. Like I, I agree with you. I think the spiritual preparation is it dwarfs the physical preparation. And and like I say, that doesn't mean don't don't prepare. Mm -hmm. Prepare everything that you, you you should be able to do both at the same time. And both yeah. of them, I would imagine, are designed to complement each other. Right? Yeah, I didn't think of that, but that's, yeah, yeah. I bet you they reinforce each other. Because just like, j just like we were talking about, like, if you're going to be stingy with your food, where's your spirit at? But mm -hmm. if you're like, you know what, I'm making the, the uh, commitment right now that I'm going to share my food. Your spirit's in a better place. You can just tell. You know yeah. what I mean? Your spirit is in a better place. You can feel the the, the energy shift in those two exactly, ways of thinking. Exactly. Exactly. There, there's something there. And uh, see, Ezra Taft Benson, he said, look, our, our the bishop's storehouses, they don't have enough food for the, mem for the members of the church. No. People that think that they're going to rely on that are going to be sorely mistaken. And I think that that had dual meaning, right? Because obviously there's the food. There's the physical food. Mm. But you also can't rely on the church for your physical food as well. You're going to have to put forth some effort and provide your your spirit with some sustenance. Yeah. And you're probably going to have to share some spiritual sustenance with people as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and and like I say, if if you have both of those things, if you got the food and if you ha have your spirit in the right place, you're in a position to share both of those things and to use both of those things to complement each other to help people out. Yeah. On both on both aspects, physical as well as, as, well as spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's, I think I you know you look at the parable of the ten virgins, right? That we've already kind of discussed, mm -hmm. but I always viewed that as a physical <clears throat> parable, talking about you know because oil is a finite resource, right? Yes. But it wasn't until Elder Bednar uh, talked about it in a spiritual sense that it really made a lot of sense to me, where that oil really is the oil of, of testimony and of, of spiritual living and following Christ. And that's the reason why when, when, you know, the five that didn't have enough, they go to the five that do. 
they're like, give us of your oil, you know, so we can yeah, make it. Exactly. And and they said, well, I can't. You know, you have to you have to go to them that sell and get your own. Yep. And in very real terms, I what they were saying is we've we've lived a life of of trying to follow Christ in every aspect, right? We've sacrificed, we've done what we can to spiritually grow, and I can't just hand that over to you. Yeah. You know, we can we can live on other people's light to some degree, but at a certain point it's it's not enough to fully sustain your spirit. And it can't be transferred just with the you know the writing of a check, you know, yeah. in the in the in the passing of money. That's something that has to be earned through years of experience. And so if if we don't have it at that time that that comes, you don't have it. You don't have it. Yeah, you're you're going to have to gain it, and it's probably going to be through the rough times that you experience during that. Whereas right now, where things are a little bit, you know, a little bit more comfy, if if you're willing to turn to the Lord now. And learn to get your own revelation. I mean, if there's anything that I think maybe, if you can say, this is the thing you need, you know, above all else, I would say knowing how to get and receive revelation from from your Heavenly Father and from Jesus Christ may be the most important thing. And if if you're like me, where you're not, you're still not 100% sure all the time when yeah. you're getting revelation, that is totally something that's worth focusing on right now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it, 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 all of this that we're talking about, it has a cool tie-in to um, the siege of Jerusalem, right? Okay. And I was I was going over this. This actually just it just kind of hit me last night, and I wound up looking up the story and going into it a little bit. But see, Christ told his disciples basically what was going to happen. He was like, "Look, here's some signs. Look look for these signs, and when they happen." You need to get out of Dodge, mm -hmm. right? And he's done that for the siege of Jerusalem. He did it specifically for that. That was going to happen 70 years after his birth. And he's also done it for the second coming, right? He said, look, here's some signs. Look for them. Look for them, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think we look for them that often. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think there are certain groups of people like you and I talk about it all the time yeah. we're looking for yeah. them you know what I mean yeah. there's definitely groups of people who are, yes. who are searching there are people yeah. who are searching but there's a large amount of I would say of the LDS people who are not looking yeah and I would say even just Christians in general Christians comfortable general. comfortable Absolutely. Christians but going back to the siege of Jerusalem the the city of Jerusalem was pretty impressive back in the day, right? It had mm -hmm. big old walls and stuff like that. There were armed people inside. Mm -hmm. You'd probably pr feel pretty safe. A little bit, a little bit of a Titanic moment. Exactly. This, not even God can sink God this himself ship. Himself could not sink this ship. Absolutely. Yeah. And and you look at that. You know that there were all these Christians were inside Jerusalem, and then the Tenth Roman Legion comes in, and they set up shop and they're getting ready to to do what they do, you yeah. know, <laughs> to yeah. conquer. The, the writing's on the wall. Yes. And everyone's inside. And then something happens. They have to go and deal with something else really fast. So they pick up and leave. And right then, the inspired uh, Christian leader said, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. Time to get out. Yeah. All the Christians bail, and they head to a, a town called Pella. Mm -hmm. And then the 10th Roman Legion comes back. And they slaughter, after a big long siege, they slaughter over a million people and enslave a bunch of thousands of people and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at that, and you can take that for a very, you know, physical, finite way of, you know, of yeah. looking at it. But if you look at that spiritually as well, you know what I mean? Where it's like Jerusalem at that time could almost represent Babylon. Yeah. You know? It almost represents Babylon, and, and you can be looking at Babylon, and you can feel safe in those walls and be like, you know what? The prophet's telling me to do this, but I'm feeling pretty good here. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. know I mean? you know what I mean? And the, our prophet is the watchman up on the tower. He's looking out. He can see what's coming, mm -hmm. right? We can't necessarily see what's coming like he can. So I think it behooves us to listen to him when he says... Head to Pella. We head to Pella, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, and, and a modern-day example of that, I mean, we've all heard of Hans Mill, right? The Hans yes. Mill Massacre, right? Yes. Yes. Something I didn't know until somewhat recently 
those people, they were warned before that happened. They I didn't were, know that. Yeah. They were told to get out of Dodge by their leaders. They said, you know, I, I, I don't know the specifics, but I imagine something along the way of something good's not coming. You need to leave. Yeah. And for whatever reason, they didn't. And that's what befell them, you know? And so the, that's once crazy. again, you, you take this even farther, you know, like you said, there's the watchman on the tower and he's, he's shouting down to us what's going on. And it's so easy, I think, to take what the prophet says lightly, you know, or even, even not necessarily that you're taking it lightly, but you go, okay, someday. Yeah. You know, not today, but someday. Yeah. And what's the rush? <laughs> yeah, you, you sit there, you nod your head, right? Is he speaking? Yes, I believe that 100%. But yet, are you actually trying to make that happen today? And that's why I, I've tried to change my paradigm that when I hear stuff in conference, I believe that that is 100% for the next six months. It's got a shelf life. You know, it, it needs to be applied soon because yes. that's for what we need. If, if, you know, if there was something else we needed more for that next six months, he would have said that. He's not going to, you know, waste his time. He's going to prepare us as much as he can for the next little bit that he has until he speaks to us again. And then he'll prepare us for the next little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's it's so easy to just take things by the wayside passively. But, man, it, how much better will we be if, if every six months when we hear, even if it's just the prophet, if we got no space for all the other speakers, <laughs> I get it. There can be a lot there. Right. But even if it's, you're just listening to the prophet and you apply what you're hearing there, how much more, you know, how much oil have you accrued right. over six months times, you know, how many years we've had and how many years we may have left, you know, try to build up that oil as much as possible. Yeah. And and like you said before, that's not something that you can just do. You don't just say, hey, teach me how to swap out a car engine real quick. Yep. I, would, <laughs> I might need that someday. You know what I yep. mean? You have to be working at this and you have to be. But that's the beauty of the gospel is that if you come in the 11th hour, if you're the servant of the vineyard that comes yeah. in the 11th hour, that he's got your back. Yep. You know what I mean? You get paid the same. You get paid the same, man. Yep. <laughs> You know, if you if you start right now doing those things, if you start doing the things, if you start doing the work necessary to prepare spiritually and physically, you're good. You're okay. Somehow it's going to be okay. Whatever mm -hmm. is supposed to happen is going to happen. Yeah. And it's it, it brings me back to um, to what Elder Kim said, you know, and I quoted him earlier. But there's they're telling us these things. They're giving us this advice. These watchmen on the hill or on the tower, are giving us all of this advice, and you can almost hear a little bit of desperation in their voice. And they're pleading. They're pleading. Mm -hmm. Almost like that. Like whatever they see coming is getting closer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And this isn't meant to be a doom and gloom at all. This yeah. is just a realization of where we're at yeah. in time, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think is coming? What do I think is coming? Oh... Nothing good. <laughs> no, Something that's, wicked that's not, this way comes. <laughs> that's, that's not completely true. I think <clears throat> we are in store for some of the most wonderful and faith-promoting experiences that have ever been available to God's children on the earth. I think right. we will have <clears throat> the opportunity to be witnesses of and record in our own journals about the wonderful things that we see. But as with everything, there is a balance, and there will be negative there's going to be difficult things coming down the road uh, <clears throat> that we'll have to balance out, maybe even precursors <clears throat> to those spiritual experiences. And maybe those negative experiences will be the catalysts for the spiritual experiences. I mean, you, you think of uh, uh, Martin and Willie Hancock companies. Yo. You know, it, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a good lesson there yes. of preparation. Yes. But also when the hard times came, they dealt with them, and those became the spiritual experiences. They didn't become the Donner Party. Yeah. I I fully expect that we're going to see some sort of food shortage of some sort in the future. I, I would not be surprised, you know, if... Actually, no, I know pretty confidently that we're going to have some sort of actual pandemic that really does affect us, right. where the mortality rates are going to be astronomical. And the ability to go outside 
and live, you know, a normal quote unquote normal life is going to be severely hampered. I am confident that that's coming along the way. And a food storage, spiritual storage, both of those things are going to help us get through that storm so that we can get to the other side for the wonderful things that are in store in the preparation for the, the coming of the Savior. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's about where I am at. I, I think that it's easy to focus on the negative. Yeah. Because that's scary. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the scary stuff. The wolf's at our door a little bit. Exactly. And the wolf is at our door. You know what I mean? There's, like I say, there is a desperation in the brethren's voice that you can hear. And it's gotten, it's gotten more and more as, as time has gone on. You know, the, the, the desperation has increased since the year 2000, 2010. It's, it's increasingly getting more desperate where they're like, guys, Come on, and, you know, and, and even they start to say things like around, and it was all around 2015, I think, uh, 2015, 2016, 2017, where they're like, guys, where you're at right now is not enough. Mm -hmm. That's a bold statement. Yep. And that, you, <laughs> Across the board. You where could you're almost at. <laughs> crush people's, you know, people's resolve with that. Yeah. Where you say, look, where you're at right now, it's not enough. We've got to be better, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, it's, it, it's crazy. And it's, we definitely can't, can't just focus on the negative. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you're saying, there are things coming that are going to be miraculous, that will literally be miraculous. Mm -hmm. And we have to live our lives in such a way that we can expect those miracles to happen. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's not easy. That takes work. Mm -hmm. Just like we're saying, we have we have to be prepared to be able to do that. I think I'm going to offer my uh, my closing arguments mm -hmm. here. Go for it. <clears throat> so previous to this time that we're in now, whenever whenever our people, whenever the you know, whenever the LDS people, whenever the the, the Christians, the Lord's people, Israel, you know. Whenever they would, were gathered together, they had to flee to the wilderness, right? Yeah. They had to bail and go somewhere to a land of milk and honey, you know, <laughs> after <laughs> yep. 40 years. Yep. yep. They got there eventually. <laughs> they got there eventually. <laughs> but we live in a dispensation, and Elder Ballard made this point where he said, there is no more fleeing to the wilderness. This is the first dispensation, the first time when Babylon comes knocking at our door, you know, as a lion even, mm -hmm. we are not to flee this time. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to flee to. And he says, what about the people in the Philippines? Where would they go? You know? <laughs> and he talks about us. He says, there's nowhere for us. There's no more wilderness for us to go to. We have to stand and we have to face Babylon now. Mm -hmm. And that's scary. <laughs> you know? Yeah. When I hear that, there's something... There's something about being able to get out of Dodge of where the evil wickedness is, of where Nimrod is building that Tower of Babel. You know, being able to get out of there and go where you can be surrounded by like-minded people, especially people who believe in Christ and who have the priesthood and stuff. But our, our calling, and I suspect that is why the Lord held us in reserve for these latter days, is because he needed people who are strong enough to face, to look at, at Babylon and not blink. Yeah. Right. And that is, that is what I am hoping to be able to do, you know, cause I know that right now I'm not a hundred percent where I should be, but as I prepare and as I continue to do the things right as I, and as I make myself do those things, then I can be prepared. When that time does come, I will be ready and I'll be able to be used as an instrument in God's hands. And that's what God has planned for every one of us. Yeah. That's, and I'll, you know, add on to that. I'm, I am a hundred percent confident in the Lord's ability to, to change us. Um, just this last week at, uh, at the 12 step group meeting, um, it, it dawned on me <laughs> that the the 12 steps right they're really they're not really 12 steps on how to 
exercise something out of your personality. It's 12 steps on how to change, shift your foundations, become a different person so that then you are then acting normally in a way that your life is better. And so for a lot of us, the preparation aspect is going to require changing who we are or a shifting of who we are. And, and I'm 100% confident in the Lord's ability to do that to us if we're willing. The world cynically cries out all the time that men don't change. People don't change. Right. You know, they, they may try, but they end up being the same people. But that is not biblical. Biblical. It's not doctrinal. That is 100% false. That is Babylon. Satan. <laughs> that is Satan <laughs> crying out to us. And so we all have the ability to make changes. And, and in this particular respect, this is something worth changing for. And the Lord will help us. You know, I, all of us, I mean, even sitting here now talking about this, I still feel somewhat underprepared. You yeah, know? I do and, too. And the fear creeps in, right? Yeah. And anytime you have fear, that is not of Christ, right? Um, but the, the confidence that can come with following promptings, small promptings, you know, even as we're listening to this, if you think, okay, next time I go to the store, I'm going to pick up a few extra things or, you know, it, it, or just paying attention to those promptings that in itself is spiritual preparation as yes, well. Yes. Yes. Um, he can make the difference of a willing heart. Honestly, all, all, it, all it takes is a willing heart that, and he can change us. He can have us molded into what it is that we need to be so that we can make those miraculous things happen in the future. And, and, you just got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. So wherever you're at right now, and it'll be much easier now to make that change than it will be in the future. And uh, say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. And walk as children of the light. Amen to that too. Yeah. Well said.